Welcome back to Wristwatchism and welcome today to 1964 where the Tokyo Olympics have just started. Tokyo and Seiko is the main timekeeper. They've just released their crown chronograph. This is a single monopusher chronograph with a center second hand. But while the purists are screaming in the background seeing this image, you'll see that the re-edition is not a chronograph. It has not got a stopwatch function. It is a brilliant re-edition when it comes to the dial. It has not got the stopwatch. Has it still got what it takes? Watch the review, see what you think. Here we have two versions of the re-edition of the Seiko 1964 Crown Chronograph a famous chapter in Seiko's sports watch history. Let's see what we got. We have the champagne, silvery champagne dial version here with the steel bracelet and we have the black version here of the same watch. Let's have a closer look at them. Silvery champagne dial SPB 127J1 and the black dial version SPB 131J1. So this is the champagne version, silvery champagne color, uh, which is the picture perfect recreation of the original. And then you have the black version and they also have a green version. This is a very nice variation on the design. I'll start with the dial. The dial is got classic Seiko um, Delta or Dauphine hands with the super um, Lumi Bright, which is the best Lumi in the business, applied to the hands. You have little squares of Lumi Bright uh, on the inside of the applied indices. The applied indices are faceted and split down the center, so it gives a brilliant play of the light as you can see here like we're used to from from Seiko it's a lot to watch for the money I mean this is uh, less than a thousand euros it comes with the 6R35 movement which has got a whopping 70 hour power reserve the Seiko logo is applied so is the so are the indices um, it's got a sharp minute track on the outside and the fact that it's got the indices pulled in towards the center makes this feel smaller than it is. It's larger than the original. This is uh, 41.3 millimeters, but it's still um, small for a Seiko sports watch. The case itself is very slim at a bit more than 11 millimeters compared to most Seikos. Uh, the case is a perfect 60s case. You, you have your typical mid case, which is round. And then you have the uh, straight, sharply downwards angled lugs, which I think will make for good comfort on the wrist. Brushed tops of the lugs. You have a really nice, uh, you have a really nice bevel on the corner. And as you can see here, the, the black, uh, PVD bezel is recessed into the top of the case. You can see that from the shape of the lugs. Um, the super Seiko quality here. You have, you see it better on the champagne version here. There's like a um, satin polished band underneath the indices as well. Uh, so if you look on the black one, it, you know, it gives you a more interesting structure to the dial. You have a nice little date window with a black background and a metal surround. The bezel. So the bezel is, on this watch, it's a bit less functional than we are used to because you can turn it and use it to time minutes from the minute hands. Or if you're bloody quick, you can actually follow the seconds hand around and then time seconds, but you know, if I'm perfectly honest, the action is superb. Uh, it lines up because it hasn't got any clicks. That's not a problem. But most of us are not going to use this bezel for any kind of timing. Let's be honest. Um, the case itself, as I said, it's lovely. 20 millimeter lug width will work fantastically on some nice leather straps. The only thing I have a slight issue with is the fact that the 
oyster style steel band is very modern. You know, this isn't a perfect recreation because it's not a chronograph. If you look at the original bracelet on the chronograph, it's a busy be bezel, uh, busy be bracelet. And what we're also used to Seiko with the, you know, silvery lines on the center link. Um, so for me, this the, the bracelet is very nice, but a bit modern and minimalist for the watch. But lovely just the same. This has got polished sides, brushed links, super tight tolerances here where it's fitted to the case and on the bracelet itself, no sharp edges. And the clasp is a small folding clasp, nice details, um, two push buttons, Seiko logo, um, a couple of well one micro adjustment but that doesn't really matter because you have a whole host of um, pinned links here that you can remove to get the fit and finish you fit and, fit and size you want the crown is a Seiko S branded crown around the back you have a simple round polished back with a serial number because each of these models with the different colors are only produced in a number of 1964. So the usual way of doing uh, limited editions now. So it's a proper limited edition, it's numbered, very nice, lovely black version, beautiful champagne version, which is a perfect evocation of the 60s. This color with the applied in the is very busy, but it does play with the light brilliantly um, let's come back to the uh, facts and then show you what it feels like on the wrist it's got a 48.3 millimeter lug length it's got a slender 11.3 millimeter height it's got a um, domed sapphire crystal with an anti-reflective coating and a nice steel oyster style bracelet screw on back which is hiding the solid workhorse movement 6R35, which was massively improved in 2019. It now boasts a 70 hour power reserve, which means that you can put this down on a Friday, go mountain biking with your G-Shock, pick it up Monday morning, it'll still be ticking away. Yes, for once Seiko has made a sports watch at 41 millimeters. It is quite thin at 11 millimeters. It's got arm hugging, lugs and the bracelet is super comfortable with a picture perfect 60s done. What more can you want?